Although Autodesk Structural Bridge Design does not provide any templates by default, it is a simple process to save any data file at any point in its creation as a template so that it can be used as a starting point for any new project. This short video demonstrates a procedure in ASBD that can be used to create a, stru uh, a structural model of a box girder bridge deck from a predefined template that was created earlier. Starting from the ASBD home screen, as you can see here, a new model can be created from a template by selecting the new from template option and selecting the predefined template. This template provides us with three materials, concrete material, reinforcing material and structural steel properties. There are no design sections being saved in this template, but there is a design beam, which is a steel composite beam. And this is defined as a simply supported 20 meter span beam. It has uniform thickness to the webs and uh, flanges of the, of the girder throughout the span. Um, and it is defined by two components a concrete slab which is 500 millimeters wide and 200 millimeters deep and a steel hybrid girder which is a box girder with various dimensions detailing the geometry of this section now these elements uh, these dimensions can be changed um, to model the section that we want to represent You'll also notice that the bottom flange has a curve and this is defined by a soffit profile where there are three points, one at each end and one in the center, where the center point is raised by 500 millimeters and the segments are defined with an arc so that there is a complete arc running through those three points. So although the girder is straight, it has a curved bottom flange. Also in the template, is a basis of a structural model. What we have here is a design line which is models a line through the center of the, uh, the slab. I've applied this as a curve uh, but it could be any transition curve or straight line as required and can be altered to be such. There are also some construction lines, um, one at the bottom here and one at the top marking the boundaries of the structure. You can see that it's five meters wide. I'm going to make this 10 meters wide by setting the offsets to be five meters and minus five meters accordingly. And we can see we've now moved the top and the bottom edges um, of the, the structure. Additionally, there's some span end lines which mark the ends of the particular span. I'm going to extend these to go from the moved construction lines. So first of all, I'm just going to clear these. And then I'm going to redraw these, setting my snap mode to be end point And just picking the ends of the construction lines to make my span end lines. I now have the boundaries of my new slab, which is defined by this mesh template, which by default was uh, just five meters wide with six elements across the width and 12 elements um, along, along the length. It's, finite, it's a finite element mesh and it's splayed. And I'm going to now change this. First of all, I'm going to set the set size well in fact let's have a look at what was in set size here you'll notice that the edge elements are 0.9 meters um, and the internal elements are 0.8 meters wide and this is defined by this, sp this spacing factor 1.125 1111 and 1.125 i'm going to set this back to equal size so that I can actually adjust the number of 
elements, which I'm going to make 12 in the uh, width of my, my structure. I then click on the boundaries of the structure and this is now redrawn change that to 12 um, this is now uh, change this so, but I do need to alter the set size again to represent two girders um, so I'm going to set the top one to one point one point one two five So this should now adjust the dimensions to again have the 0 0.9 meter spacing at the edge and 0 0.8 meter spacing in between uh, the uh, webs. So that's my mesh setup. Um, I've altered it to how I want that to be. I'm now going to go back to my structure and add in an open box component. Now this open box allows me to apply the steel composite beam that I created, that was created in the template and apply this to a line representing the center line of the girder along the, along the slab elements. So that would be this line along here and all I need to do is click on this and because of the curvature the length of the line that we've chosen is slightly longer than the 20 meter length of the span of the steel girder uh, but that will just stretch uh, stretch everything out so that's all okay and we can see here that this has created finite elements and what is known as a virtual member which allows us to obtain the bending modes and shear forces of the complete girder once we've analyzed it okay so i'm going to call this the north girder And I'm going to then add in an additional box. So I'm just going to pick the center of my second girder. And I'm going to call this south girder. And so that's all there is to actually defining this. Um, struck this structure before I add in things like supports and maybe diaphragms to it but it's as easy as that to create this basic structure let's just have a look to see what this has created for us um, by looking at the structure properties you'll see that it's created a top flange now this top flange is just simply um, a meter one millimeter by one millimeter rectangle and I'm going to actually remove um, this uh, the, these elements because they're not really necessary as part of the structure it's created slab elements um, a, a slab property 200 millimeter thick elements a web property again 200 millimeter thick elements and bottom flange of 300 millimeter thick elements if we look at three at a 3d element view of this we can see that this is now a full 3D uh, structure, curved in plan with also the bottom flange um, curved. So let's see how we delete those beam members. It's very easy to do because all we need to do is use the filter, the element filter. First of all, deselect everything, deselect everything and then just pick the beam elements. These are the only elements that are beam elements. If we change the viewing to members only, we can see that we've then just got those beam members shown. Then by going to member details, we can see that we've only got beam members in this table now. 
so just clicking on one of the the the, uh, the beams and then control a will select all of those beams and the minus will actually remove those if i remove the filter then all we've got left is the finite elements what i also need to do is change the uh, the support conditions or in fact add support conditions to my structure I want to apply supports to any joint uh, rather than just those along the span end line and I want to apply them to this joint, this joint, this joint and this joint and then swiveling the structure round I can apply that to this joint this joint, that joint, and that joint. So this then has got the joints at the end spans, but and I they're fixed in X, Y, and Z. I will then need to alter these to make them more representative of the articulation of the the bridge as it should be. But I'm just going to leave that as it is. Um, I do need to go back to my structure properties. and my webs instead of being steel steel they should be concrete and my bottom flange should also be concrete so that's the structure completed just to test this out i am going to apply some lo simple loads to the structure so I go to my structure loads and I'm going to add in some finite element loads external because I'm going to represent the self weight of the structure by a, a force per unit volume in the global Z direction of minus because it's downwards of 25 kilonewtons per meter cubed. And I'm going to apply that to all of my elements. So I should be able to analyze this now. And look at the results. First of all, let's have a look at the deflected shape rather than just the contours of displacement so change to a deflected shape I can look at the animated display shape and this is the display shape of how the structure deflects where under its own weight I can also look at the virtual member results um, and this is showing me um, this line along here and this line along here is showing me the shear force diagram for the center line of the girder based upon the results for the whole girder. Likewise, if I select MY, um, then this is the Y um, mo uh, bending moment. So I can get the results, the shear force and bending moments for these, these girders um, directly from the virtual member results now although this was a fairly simple structure um, you could start using this template for any many complex structures with more spans uh, more girders in the structure but just by making some small alterations thank you for watching